Hello, Mrs. Bewley here. This is a live demonstration of your 2.15 lab. Notice that we'll have the map here with different seismograph stations. We'll start with letter A. It prints out a seismograph readout here with the P wave and S wave arrival times. We're going to subtract these two numbers to find the difference. So 2 hours, 16 minutes, 35 seconds minus 2 hours, 11 minutes, and 20 seconds. If you do that subtraction, you find the difference is 5 minutes and 15 seconds. Now we're going to take that number and look at the distance graph. On the y-axis, go up to 515. Scroll over to where it meets the red line. It meets the red line at about 3,500. Then we're going to take the number and open up the compass to 3,500. So a compass draws a perfect circle using the point here and drawing the, uh, different circles with different circumferences. So we'll press draw circle. Notice it made the line around letter A. Now we need to record that number on your lab. So you're gonna go down to your lab here, earthquake A, write this down. The difference was 515, the distance was 3500. We're going to do the same thing for letter B now. Look at the seismograph readout here. We're subtracting the S wave from the P wave, or the P wave from the S wave. 2 hours 15 minutes 30 seconds minus 2 hours 10 minutes 35 seconds. If you do that subtraction, the dis difference is 495. We're going to open up the distance graph, 495, find where it meets the red line, and down to the distance is 3,000. We set the compass to 3,000 and draw another circle around B. You can see the pink line there. Now we'll record that on the lab. 495 and 3,000. All right, again, if you weren't able to see that, 495 and 3,000. We're going to do the same for C. Find the difference in the P and the S wave here. 2 hours, 12 minutes, 30 seconds, minus 2 hours, 8 minutes, 50 seconds. Do that subtraction. You come up with a difference of 380. We're not going to change that number from seconds to minutes because the way the distance graph is set up. So we're going to go to 380, see where it matches up. Close to 2000. Set the compass. Draw the circle. Now we'll record on the lab. The difference was 380. Distance was 2000. Now on to seismograph station D. Again, first we're going to look at this readout. The S wave is 211. The P wave is 208. Subtract those. That one's an easy one. Difference is 3. Take that to the distance graph. The difference is 3. Where does that match up with the red line? Around 1,500. Set the compass draw the circle. So you can start to see where all of these are, all of these circles are intersecting. Let's record that on your lab. For D, the difference was 3, the distance is 2, is 1,500. Now on to letter E. So you have the S wave, 2 hours, 9 minutes, 15 seconds, minus 207. The difference there is 215, 2 minutes, 15 seconds. We're going to look at the distance graph, see where it matches up, around 1000. Set the compass to 1000 and then draw the circle. Let's record those final numbers. Difference was 215 for E. The distance was 1,000. Now we want to look at where 
the epicenter of the earthquake is located in which state so you can see there's lots of circles intersecting around Washington and we're going to check that here by placing the star yes this earthquake is located in Washington state that's where all of these seismographs intersect so you can see there where the star is all of those circles intersect now your final part of earthquake one make sure you record Washington state so far your table should look exactly like this and you should have Washington state on this line now let's move to earthquake two we're going to go through the same process with a different earthquake so I'm going to press reset here and we'll take a look at seismograph station A all right subtracting the S wave 4 hours 16 minutes 15 seconds minus 4 hours 14 seconds that difference is 2 minutes 15 seconds we're going to take a look at the distance graph 215 where it matches up is a 1000 that means we set our compass to 1000 and draw the circle so you can see that circle made around A there there's the circle around A we're going to take this to the table and record 2 minutes 15 seconds distance is 1000 on to seismograph station B so it's 418 minus 415 that's an easy one no seconds on this one difference is 3 take a look at that distance graph Dif difference is 3 that matches up to around 1500 so we're going to set the compass to 1500 draw the circle and you can see that circle right around B we'll go ahead and record that on your lab the difference was 3 the distance was 1500 now on to seismograph station C So 4 hours 19 minutes 30 seconds minus 4 hours 15 minutes and 50 seconds if you calculate that difference it's 2000 we'll check that on the distance graph or excuse me the difference is uh, 3 minutes and 80 seconds so that sets us up for a distance of 2000 So we'll set the compass to 2000 here draw the circle notice the circle around C where do you think all these circles are going to intersect for the epicenter now let's go to station D let's record first actually difference was 380 distance was 2000 two more here we go D Here's the readout. 422.30 minus 417.35. If you do that subtraction, the difference is 4 minutes 95 seconds. So that's close to 5 on our distance graph here. Look where that matches up. With the distance from the epicenter is 3000. So we're going to set the compass to 3000 here and then draw the circle so you can see the pink circle is pretty big now and you can start to see where these are all intersecting here well, let's record that difference was 495 distance was 3000 one more seismograph station E here's the readout 423.35 minus 418.20 if you calculate that difference it's 515 so we're going to go up to 5 and 15 seconds see where it matches up 
closer to 3,500. We're going to set our compass to 3,500 here. So this is going to create a large circle. Draw the circle. Notice that all of these circles are intersecting. There you can see now. They're intersecting near North and South Carolina. And if you check that, you can see where all the circles intersect near the star north or on the border of North and South Carolina. So let's record that final answer and finish up here. 515, and our last distance was 3,500. And I'll take North or South Carolina since it was on the border here. Make sure you record that for Earthquake 2. Last two written questions. Why does the time difference between the arrival of primary and secondary waves grow longer at seismograph stations that are farther away from the epicenter? So this is asking why P waves get farther ahead. So imagine a runners in a race. The P wave is the fastest runner. They're moving quicker than everyone else. So in the race, they start pulling ahead more and more as the race goes on. So to explain that, we're going to say that P waves arrive first and this is because they travel through solids, liquids, and gases. S waves, secondary waves, arrive second because they only travel through solids. So as the P waves, as the P and S waves travel farther from the earthquake, the P waves get farther ahead. So they're basically that first place runner. They're just sprinting farther and farther ahead of everyone because they're able to move through solids, liquids, and gases. Okay, so that's your answer for the first written question. Second one here, this one's a quick one. We use the findings from five stations, A, B, C, D, and E, but we didn't actually need all five. The minimum number we need is three. Three is the minimum number of stations. And the reasoning for this is what's called triangulation. Tri as in three. You use three of these circles if we look back here. Three of these circles will tell you where, where the epicenter is, where the exact location is. If you only have two stations, there's multiple places where that earthquake could have occurred. So three is the minimum number of stations. So here's one last look. Earthquake one. Pause this if you need any of this information. Here's earthquake two. Again, pause this if you need any of this information. First written question, second written question, your answer is three. Thank you for completing this lab. Have a great day.